everyone, and welcome back to the Pluctus channel. With two-thirds of the Earth covered in water, human beings not only operate on the surface but perform many tasks such as warfare underwater as well. Underwater operations in submarines stand a chance of going wrong, and when that happens, the technology exists to save the surviving trapped submariners. On January 5, 1942, during World War II, the United States Navy established the Seabees as a separate unit. The word CB is a shortened version of the initials C and B, which stand for Construction Battalions. They've done amazing underwater technical work in various military contexts. The rescue and salvage activities at Pearl Harbor following the disastrous Japanese surprise attack in 1941 were greatly aided by their efforts. Since then, the U.S. Navy has relied heavily on its efforts to keep its naval might and prominence worldwide. Seabees can dive at different depths, using different types of diving gear and air mixtures. The simplest diving system is known as self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, or SCUBA. Scuba gear uses a pure compressed air system, breathed from air bottles carried on the diver's back. The air passes through a regulator and into their mouths. This is done so that all the air doesn't escape at once. Scuba diving is safe up to a depth of about 130 feet after which the compressed air becomes toxic. Exercises such as Deep Blue are held by the U.S. Navy, just off of Oahu, Hawaii, to familiarize divers with deeper diving depths. At depths deeper than 130 feet, nitrogen narcosis or oxygen toxicity can creep in. To negate the problem, helium is blended in to form heliox or trimix mixes that enable safer breathing situations. Diving gear such as the Kirby Morgan diving helmet makes it possible to feed the correct air mixture to the diver via an umbilical cord. This type of diving is called supply diving. These helmets also provide divers with the ability to communicate verbally between themselves and the mothership. One of the biggest dangers to divers is decompression sickness. When a diver ascends too quickly, nitrogen bubbles accumulate in their blood, causing pain and possible organ damage. A recompression chamber aids in this process of normalizing the patient by increasing the pressure surrounding the patient allowing the bubbles to shrink and safely dissolve back into the bloodstream. Recompression chambers are set up by the U.S. Navy whenever they perform diving operations, 
They do this as a safeguard against decompression sickness. Once the chamber is in place, trained personnel go through a checklist to make sure the system will work perfectly if needed. Most emergencies are negated by having well-trained divers and equipment that works well. To ensure that any U.S. military divers have the best equipment possible, the gear is tested. Master divers test diving equipment in a 55,000 gallon wet chamber. During testing, pressure equal to 2,250 feet of seawater is applied to their bodies. Physical exertion is simulated using an underwater exercise bike. At the end of all this, the divers must spend weeks in a special recompression chamber to get their bodies back to normal levels again. All this to ensure their fellow divers get only the very best equipment. Experimental systems such as the divers augmented vision display are being tested. These goggles are worn by divers in murky waters so that they can still get their missions done. By means of a transparent heads-up display, necessary visuals can be provided to the diver. This includes any schematics required, as well as a sonar image of exactly where they are in the water. Since U.S. Navy divers dive anywhere, David promises to be a welcome piece of gear. And with the advent of smart glasses, this technology is becoming more and more affordable. The consumer world is aware of it. We can use some of those and hybrids of those to enhance Navy dive. Gear used by divers must be exceptional if one considers where they are expected to dive. U.S. Coast Guard divers perform various types of dives, including under the polar ice caps, as well as when propeller and hull inspections are needed on their ships. Propeller maintenance is a risky job, but diving under the ice caps requires specialized training due to the freezing water and claustrophobic environment. Situations such as the exercise to remove oil from a World War II shipwreck give us a peek into their world. Divers at 180 feet work to seal oil valves on the Coimbra shipwreck. At the start of May 11th in 2019, a joint U.S. Coast Guard and New York Department of Environmental Conservation Command expertly extracted 106,101 gallons of stranded oil. U.S. Coast Guard divers have the capability to prevent emerging environmental catastrophes just like these. Divers are also utilized as explosive ordnance disposal specialists. Not only are there thousands of World War I and World War II unexploded sea mines in the oceans of the world, but newer mines as well, as in the Black Sea. In 
Annually, NATO hosts an exercise in the Baltic where divers attach explosives to undetonated mines and blow them up. The operation also entails bringing together diving teams from several countries to share equipment, experience, and techniques. The waters here are significantly warmer than back home. Another huge difference is the visibility. Sometimes if you have your hand stretched out fully, you can't even see your hand at the end of your arm. I've noticed different apparatuses that people are diving, different boats people are operating out of, and that's really neat to see from a different perspective how they operate their manpower. Divers can also be exposed to some of the harshest conditions, such as radiation. Radiological control divers are specialized individuals in the United States Navy. They've been trained to conduct dive operations in various radiological situations. Another area of expertise for divers is getting involved with submarine rescue scenarios. The NATO Submarine Rescue System is a joint effort of three NATO member countries, France, Norway, and the United Kingdom. It's meant to rescue people from sinking submarines and can dive to depths of up to 600 meters. NSRS has three parts, an intervention system, a rescue vehicle, and a transfer under pressure rescue chamber. The undersea rescue chamber is a unique and remarkable piece of engineering. Consider a massive cylindrical capsule designed to endure the high pressures encountered deep beneath the sea. Underwater operations form an important part of modern warfare. Professionals are also trained to dive to dangerous depths and hazardous conditions to perform functions vital to humanity and the environment. Conditions may include exposure to radiation or chemicals hazardous to the environment or limited visibility. On occasion, divers are even called in to destroy old sea mines to ensure the safety of the shipping and fishing industries. Every effort is made to provide divers with the equipment they need to perform their tasks. These include special glasses, rebreathers and more. If a submarine sinks and the crew survives, NATO could save the crew within 72 hours by utilizing the world-leading NATO submarine rescue system. Whichever way you look at it, these men and women help to keep our ocean safer. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.